Okay, I wanted to do a quick video about why the firebox does not warp. Now, I was under the impression that most of the stoves on the market today didn't warp. I just assumed that that would be unacceptable and that they probably didn't warp that much. Uh, but I've had some feedback from, from some of our customers who have received their firebox and have been so happy with the sturdiness of its construction and and the fact that it doesn't warp. Um, I have a customer, uh, Steve Finnegan from France, who says he's owned several different twig burning or wood burning type stoves, hobo type stoves, and he says they've all warped. That's just been something that's that's just been uh, common with every with every stove that he has had in the past. So he's really excited about this um, because it it does not warp. And the reason it doesn't warp is because two reasons. One, because we use 18 gauge stainless steel. Now most of the flimsy little put together stoves they're made out of 23 to 24 gauge stainless steel. Now that's a really big difference 18 gauge to 23 or 24 and you may ask yourself the question of well why can they get away with using such a lightweight with material and and we have to use such a heavy gauge material well one reason is because we don't warp at all and number two is because the firebox is capable of putting out so much more heat um, and, and I can't say that about all the wood-burning stoves, but a, at least a lot of the wood-burning stoves, for one, they're a lot smaller than this. This is 5 inches by 5 inches, and the burn chamber itself is almost 5 inches as well. In fact, I have a measuring thing here. So we've got 6 inches to the top, but the actual burn chamber is like 4 and a half inches. So it's a big burn chamber, and because we don't have any type of fuel restrictors or fuel restrictions you can completely fill this thing full of fuel and uh, and have a really big fire now if you if we had a a small hole in the side to restrict the flow of fuel then like most of those uh the side feed type systems they have a hole about this, uh, about this big, so it, it'll hold about this many sticks. Now the sticks would be longer, but what I'm trying to show is how much fuel is actually in the stove at one time. So if you had these long sticks going through the sides, and then inside the stove would be this much fuel. Okay, so imagine they're coming out, but this is how, how much is actually in the stove. Okay, well you put this in the firebox, and you can see we're just barely getting started. The firebox can be, can be completely filled up, and sometimes it's filled up with hot coals and becomes very, very hot. You can really put out a lot of heat. I, uh, I do a boil test with a, with a pretty full firebox um, with just twigs and sticks, and I'm able to boil water in 2 minutes and 38 seconds, which is, just really shows how much heat is produced by a wood fire. So we have no restrictions on the fuel. Um, your range of BTU output is very wide. You can build a really small fire in here and you you know you may choose to only use this much wood. Okay? Or you can go ahead and load it up and have a very high high BTU uh, stove. So we're not restricted, you know, some some stoves, you know, you have this much range of BTU output, but with the firebox, you know, you have much, much more range of BTU output. So the stove does get a lot hotter than what uh, a lot of the other stoves get. Now, the other reason that it doesn't warp, and I haven't explained this in the past because we've wanted to get all of our patent um, information all filed and all that done before we actually explained what this was. But we changed the ventilation from the first generation firebox to this to this current model, and uh, and the reason we did that was because we were trying to eliminate the warpage because to us it just wasn't acceptable to have a stove that was warping. Um, 
and I guess for other stove manufacturers, they just decided that they didn't have any choice, and it was just a fact of life that their stove was going to warp. Well, we came up with a solution for that, and what that is is this this perforated area, this perforated shape. What this does is this isolates the hottest zone of the stove. This area gets by far hotter than the whole rest of the stove. And what happens is, is as this area gets hot, prior to us having this perforation in here, then that, that area of material would expand and it pushes on the cooler parts and that's what actually causes the warpage. Now by having this perforation, when let's say we have an upward force, it's going to be it's going to be directed to to this little area and then it's going to push up and what's it what it's going to do is it's going to be able to just flex in that hole right there rather than transferring that uh, expansion into the cool zone and causing the warpage so it's a it's a expansion suspension basically it isolates and it suspends that uh, that expansion and keeps it from turning it into warpage and this ended up being a really good thing for us because before we had all of our ventilation kind of focused in the bottom and what happened is as you filled the firebox up and it built up hot coals those hot coals would kind of block off that ventilation and what I realized is is your fire inside of here is is kind of a circular shape it's kind of like a ball of of fire building materials and fire and hot coals and everything else so I always thought that having the ventilation closer to the corners would be beneficial because they would have less of a chance of being blocked off and and clogged up and this uh, this also allows us ventilation all the way the whole range of the fire chamber so no matter how full you fill it I have a video where I fill it full of um, sawdust and and wood pellets and I completely fill it to the top here but yet you can still see this row of ventilation is still available to feed it combustion air even though it's completely full so this this pattern really gives us a lot of advantages not not only with the uh, controlling the warpage but also with uh, providing ventilation through all types of conditions that you can have with the firebox stove. Now I'm going to show you what we do to test the fireboxes as we've tested different alloys of stainless steel and as we've tested different designs this is the test that we use to see if it's going to hold up to anything anyone could put into it. We want people to be able to throw any type of fuel in here and know that the firebox is going to be able to hold up to it. So as you can see, if you put a straight edge up against this, this is this is real straight right now. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and this is what we've done, you know, every time we've had a new product that we've wanted to to be sure um, was going to hold up well for us is we, we run it chuck full of charcoal briquettes. Now I would challenge any other manufacturer, any other stove manufacturer out there to do this test and just see how your stove holds up. And I guess, uh, I guess we can't really count on people to do that on video because they're not going to want to show their product, you know, warping. But maybe, maybe there's some people who own some different kinds of stoves who think that, you know, maybe their stove would hold up to this kind of heat, you know. So maybe I'll challenge the users rather than the manufacturers. If you have a stove that you think will hold up, or maybe you just want to see if it would hold up to this kind of heat. But I'm going to go ahead and get, I'm just going to kind of cram these in here the best I can. I want this to be, you know, and this kind of settles in as, as, it, as it heats up. So I'm just going to go ahead and load it right up to the top. I'm 
this is actually match light, but I'm, I'm going to put this on as well because I kind of want to speed this up a little bit just in the interest of time and keeping this video entertaining. So we've got plenty of lighter fluid going on there. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this because the wind is kind of blowing pretty hard in this one direction. Just so it'll all get going evenly, I'm just going to rotate it. Okay, so you can see that this is going really pretty good now, um, and it's even hotter down below, and I hope that you can see this well. It's kind of bright out here, so it's hard for me to see it, um, but you can kind of see the glowing inside of there, and you can even see the color of this area and how it's kind of distinctly different than the whole rest of the stove. That's because everything that's here, all the smoke or whatever else, has completely burned off because it is this, the material is just so hot right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this straight edge up against here. It's really hard to do because it is hot, so I'm going to have to move fast. I hope that you can see that. I, ouch! Let's try to get that view from this other side here. Yeah, that is screaming hot. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this pot off again and just hold that uh, that ruler up against there again so that you can see the, the straightness of these side plates. Oh, yeah, that's hot. Yeah, you can see it goes in. I can't see the picture, but you can see it goes in slightly, slightly in the center. So the heat is having an effect. i got to cool off this ruler. I shouldn't have used a steel ruler. Go ahead and sight down that pretty good. I'll go ahead and hold this up against here. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at it in the right angle. Okay, I hope you can see that good. I can't. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so that I can look at the other side. firebox does not warp. And I don't know how many stove manufacturers can make that claim, um, but we can, so we will. The firebox does not warp. Woohoo! Thanks everybody.